Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Tried doing a live stream this morning. I actually got through it, uh, but when I started, I sounded like Alvin and the Chipmunks. I still don't know why that's the case. So I thought I'd upload another video anyway to just kind of get rocking and rolling. Um, thought I'd dispel a couple of myths, and one of them is uh, that you're hearing a lot, and uh, you know we really don't know how it's going to turn out. But boy, if interest rates get up to four percent, the party is over. Here comes the crash. So we're going to look historically at that and chit chat about that a little bit. Uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about foreclosures, so stay tuned for that. But uh, interest rates are the talk of the day, and you know us real estate agents were always accused of manipulating the market. Um, you know, I went to my last manipulation meeting and uh, just learned all kinds of new ideas from fellow realtors. Um, we don't do that. <laughs> it's impossible for us to manipulate the market. So I don't know where that argument comes from. I just find it kind of silly, to be honest with you. Um, you know, we don't, we look at data. We, our job really is just to manage you through the minefield of regulations in a real estate deal. I can't sell you a house. Uh, those of you that have toured homes with me, you know I don't sit there and go, oh, this thing's great. you got to buy this house. If you don't want it, you're not going to buy it. So I will point out things that I think you should see uh, and pay attention to and concentrate on when you're having the house inspected. Uh, I talk about, uh, um, I was in one just the other day, and it looked to me like thing was going to fall down. So um, there have been times where I've told clients, you're not, you don't want to buy this house. And, uh, but you'll never see me saying, oh, you want this one. This is great because that's totally 100% up to you. Anyway, where are interest rates? Well, here's where they're at. Um, today, this is a national average. Your rates will vary. It'll depend on your program, depend on your lender, um, and depend on the fees that you pay. So the 30-year average right now today is 3.21. Yesterday, it was 3.24. Chairman, Fed Chairman Powell came out and said that uh, he had a little concerned about this new variant, that if we start seeing global shutdowns again, that's a game changer. So it's really hard to predict rates right now. And I won't even attempt to do that except to say that it looks like now and probably through January, this is where we're going to stay right here in this 3.21 range. 15-year fixed, they're averaging 2.6. Interesting numbers to look at too is the Cromford Report said on November 11th, the average closed price per square foot across all areas slipped below 100% of the average list price per square foot. In other words, we were at 100 to 101%. So you had the house price closed here and the list price was here. So the close price was slightly higher. It started to dip. For the first time since March 2018, they waited a while to report it to ensure it was not a blip. The percentage on November 11th was 99.99. Well, okay, that's that's a little dip there. It's now dipped to 99.92, not a blip. What they're saying is this signals that the market is cooling slightly. However, the long-term average is 97.25%. 97.25% of the homes that are listed are closing below their asking price. Prices still tend to rise when the percentage is above 97%. So don't take this as a signal that prices are coming down. They're saying if it were to drop below the long-term average, we'd have a good reason to be more pessimistic about prices. So there's your number. If we start seeing that change, then you know that prices are starting to come down and it's a trend. And right now, we don't know what that trend is. So this chart shows us right here. I should show you the chart. Um, this shows, in other words, sales per month. Now, we see this chart way down here. This is November. Well, the month isn't over yet. So let's look at October. So October here, we have 8,280 homes that closed, went under contract. So let's go back to last October, go back a year, and we had 9,456. Part of the reason in that difference is because there's fewer homes out there this year than there were last year. So whether or not sales are going to increase as listings come up remain to be seen. And here's our listing situation here. So if we look at this chart, we can see that 2021 is still below 2020, not listings, these are closings. So listings under contract. So we're below, it looks like a big number, but it's not. You know, right here was 12,633 versus 12,928. Uh, 
Look at 2006, though. See, things just fell off the earth in 2006. The crash wasn't until 2008. Now, why did rates... Um, uh, we're going to go back here and show you what I'm talking about in interest rates. Um, why was there a crash in 2008? Well, we've talked about that ad nauseum, and that's because everybody's interest rates switched. They got a rate of 1%, and it was actually 7%. As you can see here, 2005, the average rate was going up 6.41%. But you know what? The dirty secret was nobody was paying that 6.4%. They all had adjustable rate mortgages. They were paying either interest only or 1%. Then when it reset, uh-oh, my $800 payment's now 2000 I can't afford the house. And things just came crashing down hard. But this shows you the home sales are in blue. Rates falling are in yellow and rates rising are in red. And here's the home sales. Not impacted, except for 2008 when things went to hell in a handbasket. And here's home prices. As you, again, you can see 2008 uh, prices declining. But prior to that, you can see that prices were going up even as rates went up. So is 4% going to be the time when... We end up seeing, seeing, <coughs> excuse me, seeing housing prices crash. I don't think so. One of the reasons, one of my theories for that is, well, the data, first of all, is showing you, it's not a big of a deal as you think it is. I think people are used to 3.1. They were used to 2.9. I don't think the party's over if we hit four. But one of the things you see in the lending industry is when rates start to increase, you get more choices and more creative products more adjustable rate mortgages, shorter terms, longer terms. We may see a 40-year mortgage. I know they're already floating that option out for, for people that are exiting forbearance at a 30-year mortgage and the amount that they owe maybe is uh, too much for them to bear. So they're rewriting the note, turning it into a 40-year mortgage. So if rates spike up, along with rates spiking up, you'll see creativity spike up. Some of it good, some of it bad. Who knows? But that's something to watch for. So I don't see that being an issue. Now, one of the other things, a little bit of myth busting here, is foreclosures are spiking today. Well, yeah, because we didn't have any last year. Everybody was in forbearance. So we're up almost 70%. But 70% of what? I think the Phoenix area has 141 foreclosures. The real number to watch is how do we compare to 2019 before we had the forbearances. Foreclosures are down 70% according to ATTON. Down 70% is the real number. But the headlines that you're seeing is that we're up 67% versus last year. I'm like, oh my goodness, here comes the crash. You got to drill in, look at the devil is in the details. You got to look at the numbers. So I hope that clears up a couple of myths. We'll watch interest rates, see what happens, and we'll keep track of it here. Take care. <music>